hello and a very warm welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now it's amazing how so many websites, TV programs and other media outlets present one euro houses in Italy in such a positive light. But in today's video, I want to consider the dark side of buying these type of houses and give you 10 reasons why perhaps it would be better to stay away from these type of purchases in Italy. And number one is location. Most of these one euro houses are in small villages, which in general are not popular places to buy homes in Italy. It's not like you're buying in a big city like Turin or Palermo, or a nice seaside town, for example, Scalea. Number two, they are cheap for a reason. Most of these one euro houses are in a very bad state, so of course you are going to end up paying a lot more to get these houses in a livable condition. You are looking at renovation costs of at least 15 to 20,000 euros, and in most cases, a lot more. Number three, you must put down a deposit. Most towns and villages which offer the one euro housing scheme will insist that you put a deposit down and many of them will ask for 5,000 euros which you will not get back if you do not complete the works. So in effect, once you have bought, you really have to go through with the renovations. Otherwise, as said, you're going to lose that deposit. Number four, very important, demographics. The demographics in Italy are not good. Italy's birth rate is only 1.2 per couple and it's already a very old population. Now, of course, this affects all parts of Italy's cities and towns, but it affects villages a lot more. It is much worse in villages than it is in larger towns and cities. And basically, Italian youngsters have no interest in living in very small towns and villages. They are much more interested in finding work in the larger towns and cities. And this leads me on to point number five. Who are you going to sell your property to in the future if you decide to sell? It will be very hard to sell a property in a small village where there is little demand to buy property. Of course, there are a number of places where you should be able to resell your property if you want to without too much difficulty. And two that come to mind are Taranto in Puglia, which is a relatively large city, and Caltagirone in Sicily, which of course is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You may also be able to sell in the future properties um, in villages near the seaside. So not all places are bad for selling in the future, but the majority of these villages, it will be difficult to sell your property in the future because there just isn't any demand. Number six, additional costs. As well as renovation costs, you are still going to have to pay notary fees, legal fees, and possibly estate agent fees. Don't forget also the fees for flights to and from the property. And these can really add up, especially if you're coming from the US and further afield. Number seven, let's talk about logistics. Some of these villages might be difficult to get to by public transport. And also, if you are renovating a property, it might be difficult to find hardware stores locally because hardware stores tend to be in the larger towns and cities. And let's not forget, major cities in Italy are extremely well connected especially by train, and I'm thinking particularly of the, the route Milan to Naples. But there's many parts of southern Italy which are not so well connected. So this is another problem you're going to have to think about because most of these one euro houses are in the south of Italy in places like Sicily, Calabria, Basilicata. Number eight, it's going to be very, very time consuming. Let's face it, it's going to take up a lot of your time. And dealing with local builders can be difficult as well. If the project takes a long time to complete, you'll have to decide if you want to supervise the project firsthand, in which case you will have to find other accommodation. 
potentially within the village. And this, in effect, the longer it takes to renovate the house, the more expensive it's going to be. So either way, if you're coming, let's say, from the US, you're going to have to think, right, I'm going to have to pay a lot of flights if I'm going to supervise this project, let's say, every two months, uh, a project which can take a year. You're going to have to think about all the flights to and from the US. And if you're actually on the spot, you're going to have to think, right, where can I get accommodation for several months if I want to supervise this project on a daily basis? Very, very important, that point. Number nine, I think there are better alternatives. I personally believe that if you buy an apartment, let's say near the sea, in many parts of Italy, it's better value because many um, towns and cities, not, not too big cities, near the sea, you can find apartments with sea views sometimes for less than 100,000 euros. Um, and I'm thinking also of places like Scalea in Calabria, where you can actually buy apartments with sea view for under 50,000 euros. So you've also got to think about that as well. And in many of these villages, um, the newer houses um, sometimes can cost only about 70 to 80,000 euros. So you've got to think, is it worth it? Or perhaps it may be worth buying a property for 10,000 euros, which does need work, but doesn't need um, a whole renovation project. So in my opinion, in Italy, there are much better alternatives than this one euro housing scheme. And finally, um, I want to just say, um, many people think that this could be a good business proposition. But I think it's better, for example, to do Airbnb in other places in Italy. So it's better to do Airbnb perhaps for the summer near a seaside town or a lake, for example, Lake Como, Scalea maybe in Calabria, which where property is very cheap, or in some of the big cities. And I've heard a number of cases where people have actually um, renovated these properties, tried to set them up uh, as Airbnbs, and basically they failed because there just wasn't enough demand um, in the, even in the summer for foreigners to come and stay for holiday periods. So I think uh, even for Airbnb purposes, I don't think these purchases are particularly good. And also, I, I just um, before I go, I just want to leave you with one thought. Uh, when you buy a property in Italy, which I, I've said before, I don't think is an amazing investment, but it's a great lifestyle purchase. Do you actually really want to go through all that hassle of having to really renovate often, for example, for, for months at a time, or maybe in some cases, well over a year, when in fact, Italy is more of a place you come, buy a property, and really, really enjoy it to the full, enjoy the lifestyle, rather than um, actually taking on projects and working. And finally, um, I think the only people who should really, really go for these projects are actual people who enjoy renovating. There are people who actually enjoy renovating property. But I think the majority of people um, might find it in the end a little bit too much. I've heard stories of people that have said as much. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you think of these one euro houses in, in Italy, especially in the villages? Do you think they're good value for money or not? Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I shall see you soon on the next video.